Hello and welcome to my talk, Indoctrinator PDF Generation Services. Before we start, I'd like to say a few words about myself. My name is Sören Schaffstein. I'm CEO of DKD Internet Service located in Frankfurt, Germany. DKD is a web design company located in Frankfurt. We are specialized in developing websites, most with Title III, of course, that's why we're here. But we also have a team of Ruby on Rails developers doing Ruby on Rails stuff for situations where Ruby on Rails might be a better tool to do. We have about 60 people working in Frankfurt, and of course we also have a pizza oven. It's the legendary DKD pizza oven, where we do fresh pizza every Thursday. So if you're ever there in Frankfurt on a Thursday, just step by and have a slice of fresh made pizza. I myself, if I'm not in the office, I really like to travel around the world. Here we see one of those beautifully illuminated tree shores in Malaysia, decorated with Hello Kitty cats and everything. Beautiful. And as you can see, I love to do photography. That's one of my private hobbies. And when the weather is great, I like to go outside and do a bit of mountain climbing. So now you know everything about me. Let's talk a bit about PDFs and stuff like that. Why am I giving this talk to you today? It was like one and a half years ago when I was struggling with a situation where I got an email with a Word document, was a quote from some company, and I opened it up and it looked really crappy because the font was not on my system and the margins on the left side were too far and I thought, oh my god, that shouldn't happen to documents we send out. So um, it was very clear that PDF would be a good solution to do that because PDF works a lot better in this kind of situation. When you send it out, it works really nice. So let's have a small look at PDF at first. If you go to Wikipedia and look up what a PDF actually is, it says portable document format is a file format used to present documents in a manner independent of application software, hardware, and operating systems. That's exactly what we need. So to give you a short overview of the features of a PDF document, the document itself encapsulates everything, especially fonts, text, graphics, and everything else you might need to present the information you want to show. Additionally, and what's really great, it's an open standard, standardized by the International Standard Organization. It can be digitally signed, can also be protected, and it also employs various substandards, which is really interesting in several situations. I've picked out the two most important ones. The first you might have encountered is PDFX, PDF for exchange, which is typically used when you create a PDF, send it to a print shop and have it printed. So this format guarantees that there's everything for the print company to print it in the way you intended it to be. The second one I think is even more interesting, especially in the digital age we're in, is PDF A, PDF for archive. If you want to archive documents you create, especially l when you talk about long-term preservation, and if you want to talk long-term preservation, talk to Olivier or talk to me. We are in a European Union research project since 2013, and this is a lot about long-term preservation. And I want to go into more detail at this point in this talk, but there's a lot to learn and lots of interesting stuff. The project is called Forget It, and it's funded by the European Union. And there are even more substandards for PDF, but I won't go into detail here because it's other, stand, uh, other t um, situations where you might need it, and um, I think you got the point. So additionally, PDF is platform independent, means it works on every system you have, even on your mobile device, where responsive design is a very nice idea for having a website, but if you have a document, it's already there, it works. Just open it, 
have a PDF application on your mobile device and you can already work with a PDF even if it's five years old. So, to sum it up, PDF is great for documents that should be printed, documents that should have specific appearances, and documents that should be archived. So, how should we create a PDF then? So there's many different ways to do that. You can like use a scanner you can buy nowadays, scan to PDF, then you got a PDF. You can install a printer driver that creates a PDF from any application on your system. You can use a save as PDF functionality if your software offers that. You can use a software library. There are loads of libraries out there that can create PDF documents. But all those Solutions have advantages and disadvantages, like scan to PDF typically creates um, very large files and most of them can't be searched because the text is not um, detected and converted to text. Um, PDF printer drivers most of the time don't work exactly with all the settings like um, appearance of your document, so um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not, you have to figure that out. Save as PDF is not available in every application you might want to use. And using software libraries requires you to be a programmer or if you want to do some more sophisticated stuff like tables spanning multiple pages or having a table of content in your document, you have to all code that yourself and that can be very time consuming. So there's another solution to doing PDF and it's called Latex. And if you think about this, it's not. this might be the talk in the next room. If you think about this, then you might have had a very good mark in your Latin lessons, because in Latin, latex means water or liquid. So something you can brag about in the bar tonight, that you know some Latin, but it's not the latex I'm talking about. That is the one. And to teach you something more, it's pronounced latex. Okay, from now on I try to speak and pronounce it correctly in this talk, but please forgive me if I don't, because latex, latex, whatever, is so common in German. So, what is LaTeX? It's a document preparation system, and the website itself says LaTeX is a high-quality typesetting system. It includes features designed for the production of technical and scientific documentation. And maybe you have come across LaTeX at your time at university and remember something like this. So the ugly bird creating those black and white documents which all look the same. But LaTeX is not the ugly caterpillar anymore. LaTeX evolved a lot during the last years. And to look at you into more detail now, there's probably a few things you already know about LaTeX, like it is the de facto standard for scientific documentation, or it's also available as free software. It allows easy generation of stuff like table of content, page numbering, document headers and footers, index of used words, stuff like that. It's also a plain text format, meaning you can use your version control system of choice to do version control. It's easy to collaborate on LaTeX documents and it produces small file sizes. But there's a lot more you probably not know by now. So, um, like LaTeX has a package system like Type 3 and there are over four and a half thousand packages out there which you can use and you can make use of the knowledge and ideas of the other programmers already working with LaTeX. You can do links and cross-references very easily in LaTeX documents. PDF bookmarks are automatically there. Bibliographies automatically generated if you do it in the right way. Tables spanning multiple pages, very easy thing. PDF metadata automatically generated, no hassle anymore barcodes, QR codes, no special library required. Just type in the text you want, say QR code, done. Custom styles for your content. Everything 
no problem. Just choose a different LaTeX template and your content looks totally different. Automatic generation of graphics. Yes, you can just write some LaTeX code and you will have graphics and it's graphic like scientific graphics, beautifully looking spirals or even poppy flowers. Just LaTeX code. So, brilliant. Let's do everything with LaTeX now. Okay, I have to admit it's not that easy. Because I like to give you a very short introduction into LaTeX to show you why it's beautiful but still not accessible to everyone. Because if you want to write something in LaTeX, like a simple paragraph, you just write a simple paragraph. Cool, simple, easy. And if you want to have something bold in LaTeX, you could do something like this. Can we have something backslash text bf curly braces bold curly braces closing? It doesn't look so intuitive anymore, except you know it. Or if you want to make a bullet list, of course that works, but it even gets more complicated because you have to introduce something called an environment in LaTeX with a begin itemize uh, some item blah and itemize again. So this is not the stuff you want to throw at your typical office secretary. And if you want to have a table, um, maybe we don't talk about this now because it even gets more <laughs> complicated. So, and how to get a PDF from LaTeX? You take the the code, you put it into the LaTeX compiler, and then you will get the PDF. So, you see where I'm getting. It's kind of a challenging path um, to have a system which, from the idea, is a very good system to generate PDF documents, but it's also targeted at developers. And that was the point where I came across LaTeX in the office and I thought, wow, it's such a beautiful system, it can do so much, but um, I cannot teach it to everybody in our office. So how can we approach this? How can we take the difficult part away and keep the beauty? And that's why I chose this picture. Um, at first, I like this picture because I did climb this. It's the orange shoes from me, you see there. And on the other hand, it's pretty much the same with LaTeX. If you managed to work the challenge, then the view at the top is very beautiful. So what we thought out with our team was a tool called Indoctrinator. It's an open source tool, and we will be publishing it next week. And it helps you to generate your PDF documents using the power of LaTeX, but at the ease of a simple web or REST interface tool. So how does Indoctrinator work? You would start with a LaTeX template that any developer who understands LaTeX creates for you, and then everybody can create content, and together this will be put into Indoctrinator, and at the end you get back your PDF. And this can be done using a web interface, so everybody in your company who can access a web browser and type an address can use the web interface. And if you have developers um, who have like a Type 3 extension, a web form or something like that, um, which can use the REST interface. So you can control it manually and you can control it by machine. Enough talk, let's look into it. If you open up Indoctrinator, you will first see a list of available templates. And with each template comes the template name, explaining what the template is, and a set of buttons um, which allows you to work with that template. The first button um, normally renders this particular template. The next one is for developers, showing debug output or error messages, if you produced any. Then you can, of course, edit the template, delete it, and um, we keep a template production log. Like for each time you render the template as a PDF, we keep that as a log if you like that, and you can go back and edit the output you produce. So I select one template, for example. This is the DKD support contract template. This is something we have a support department in the company, and we have a 
default support contract, which is the same for every customer of ours. But of course, each customer has a different name and maybe they have a different deal, like ordering more or less hours each month. So there are small adaptions to this contract every time a new customer wants to have this contract. But as a big part of the contract which stays the same all the time and must stay the same all the time because it was checked by our lawyer and um, approved by the management of the company. So I don't want anybody in the company run around and change the parts of the contract that they shouldn't. So what people can do in the company who have access to create the contracts, they can only fill in the fields we have approved to change and you see it's the typical fields which are available in the web form like text inputs, radio buttons, check boxes, pull downs, whatever. And then if they have filled that out, they press the generate button and then they get a beautifully designed contract with up-to-date contract information. So even if we decide in the management to change the contract text, we just update the contract text on the central system and every project manager has access to the current and up-to-date version. Additionally, as a nice feature here, you see the highlighted parts of the contract, which are in yellow. This is the information which was filled in in the web form. So if you create a contract as a project manager, you directly see what is the information you put in and what information is unchangeable. Now you can send that over to your client and tell them please check the contract if you like it. We send you a version where the fields are not highlighted anymore, you can sign that. And of course, if you want to produce this PDF without highlighting, you just untick the box, highlight fields, and then the PDF will not be highlighted anymore. Very nice. Another example I want to show you is when you want to employ graphics in such a template. We have the so-called client matrix at DKD, which is a very small document where we fill in the name of a client, a project, and a score f with the values minus one, zero, one, for certain areas of business. And then you just submit this um, form and you get back a beautifully designed PDF showing the parts of the project and the client in which the project was very good, in which it was not very good. And so you get a very easy way of visualizing information and the person who created this document doesn't have to have the company font on their computer. They don't have to have any graphic software and they cannot break the layout because it's all in the LaTeX template and it's still available if you just have a web browser who can open the web form and submit it. So how can you create a template? It's very easy as well because it's just two simple fields in Indoctrinator. There's a name and there's the content of the template and then you have the option of adding an arbitrary amount of variables to that template. So filling in an example would be like you give it a name like the Hello World template and you put in some very basic LaTeX code um, which just puts in a headline and adds the two variables and in the bottom of the template you would introduce the variable one in this example and you can choose the presentation which means um, how should that be rendered if you use the web interface. The presentation of course doesn't matter if you use the REST interface and then you're done with the template. That sounds nice for easy templates but there are more complex templates of course. Therefore we introduced template packs which basically is a zip file you can upload into Indoctrinator and the zip file includes everything you need for a template like all the configuration of the variables, the template itself of course, any assets like graphics and more and then you can version control your files on your favorite version control system Sorry. upload it to Indoctrinator and you're done. So now you want to see some real world examples because we've not only done this for our own and contract management, um, a lot more interesting are the examples out for our clients which um, facilitate the REST interface of course. So let's have a look there. 
One of our clients is Arco. They're doing everything around drainage, meaning working with water, collecting it, cleaning it, holding it, and releasing it later on. So all products made by Arco are centered around water. And one of the products they offer is gratings for collecting water and protecting you from not falling into this slot where the water is collected, for example. And since they have a lot of different kinds of gratings, they have a website which is called Drain Design, and it looks something like that. And in that website, you can design your own, let me say, grating experience. Um, you can select a different kind of grating, um, like with different holes or from a different material, and you can even change the setup where the grating should be placed, like on gray stone or something else. But the joke in the website is now you can download the data sheet for that in the lower right part. And the data sheet is created on the fly exactly how you specified you wanted to have it. And it means if you select the dark background, um, you will get the data sheet with the dark background. If you selected the red background, you get the red background. But those two data sheets are for the exact same product. They have the exact same data taken from the, personal uh, from the product information system. And it's only the images we change. But since there are so many possibilities of combining the products and the backgrounds and so on, um, it was important that um, the documents were generated on the fly and only with this configuration. And even if some specifications change, they just change it in their PIM system because um, the document directly connects to there and the data sheet will be updated. But they had an even greater challenge for us with their general catalog, where they have approximately 15,000 different products in approximately 60 different languages because in this industry, they have like special names for parts in Australia and Great Britain and so on. So English is not English anymore. So we have loads of loads of variants. And this leads to generating the normal data sheets from their website with um, as PDF as well. And that's really interesting since the data sheets are a bit more complicated because they employ stuff like custom headers and footers, optional info boxes which might be on the sheet or not, um, a three column layout, optional sections, tables spanning multiple pages. This can be a real horror if you're doing PDF generation. If you have encountered that one, it's no problem with LaTeX at all. Um, links to product websites and up-to-date information from the product information management system. This also works um, using the REST interface. Generation time for one of the data sheets is smaller than three seconds. So it's very easy for us to do that um, in real time because data sheets are not downloaded like 50 per second or something like that. And additionally, Indoctrinator allows easy caching because we have a separate URL and can use varnish or Nginx caching or anything. So a document will only be generated once. And if something of the parameter changes, the caching system will automatically see it and the document can be generated new. Then, of course, when we walk, work with type of three form handler forms are uh, an issue and interesting. That's why we created a form handler finisher, which can speak to indoctrinator and the REST interface. We have an example here where we generate um, packaging labels for a client. You fill in this um, form with your address, you submit it um, to form handler and you will get back the PDF which you can directly print and put in your package you want to send. Additionally, having the REST interface made it possible to create a small droplet application. Um, I just give you a small demonstration of that. Um, we work a lot with Redmine at DKD, which has a wiki which uses textile syntax. So lots of our um, documents are generated in plain text, textile syntax, because it's very simple, very useful, and contains structured information. 
but sending out a textile document to a client wouldn't be my weapon of choice. So I thought, how can we easily create a nice looking DKD document from a textile document? And what you see here, if you don't know textile, I'll give you a short introduction. It starts with H1 dot, which means this is a headline of um, size one, then follows a simple paragraph with something at the end which says type of three community in two asterisks, that should be bold, and following at the bottom is a list because having an asterisk, a space, and then something starts a bullet list in this textile syntax. So what I do now is I would take this file I drop it onto the textile to PDF droplet on my desktop and it connects to Indoctrinator and gets back the PDF and then I just um, have it on the computer rendered in DKD style the way I was wanted it to have. So that's really simple and the um, droplet was very easily created um, with some bash scripting. I think it's three lines of code or something so you can easily do it yourself if you want to do something like that. Okay, what's the roadmap for Indoctrinator? Since we have had very much positive feedback for this kind of software, we already thought about how should we go on with that. Um, I'm confident that we will add user management at a very short point. Um, we will have a parser pipeline since um, parsing the information coming in is often an interesting task like I showed you the textile to PDF was taking the textile content, converting it to LaTeX syntax and then creating the PDF from that. But there could be many more ideas of parsing content like um, changing variables, stuff like that. Um, we will be offering indoctrinator tools which help a lot with creating um, packages and documentation of these packages. And um, we're also thinking about having Indoctrinator offered as software as a service if you don't want to install the whole system which is based on Ruby on Rails and if you don't want to do the whole installation we're thinking about offering this as a paid service where you just have to install the templates you want and use it. So, at this point, you're welcome to ask questions. None. Was it so easy? Okay. Then if you don't have any questions, let me add one more thing. I want to thank the Indoctrinator team at DKD a lot for doing this brilliant piece of software. And of course, I want to thank you for listening to this talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>